be talking about medical school. You go learn today. You go learn. So get ready to learn. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. And today we're going to be talking about medical school. What? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to medical school. What? This is my this is my cat. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. Farhan couldn't make it today. He's a little busy, but you got me. You got the animated Farhan, and that's more fun, to be honest with you. Okay, so the question today is, do you need good grades to get into medical school? Now, before we dive deep into the topic, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, right down there. Hey, subscribe button. And also hit that bell button. So every time we post a new video, you guys can get notified on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's when we usually post, depending on how busy Farhan is. Hopefully, he's like, got his shit together and he posts regularly, okay? Now that being said, let's talk about grades. Do you need good grades to get into medical school? And the answer is yes, you do need good grades to get into medical school. I know it may be kind of surprising to you guys to figure it out, but to be honest with you, it's pretty straightforward and I'm surprised you guys have even asked this question. In fact, I'm surprised you're even still watching this video. I'm just kidding. Please stay, don't go. Okay, so. Do you need good grades to get into medical school? And if so, why? The answer is yes, you do need good grades to get into medical school. Now you have to think about why you need good grades to get into medical school, right? As an undergrad, you're taking bio, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, math, and English, and all these classes on top of that to just finish your major. Now you do your prereqs. Now you have the classes, you have your discussions for the classes, and then you have the labs that you have to go to for a lot of those classes, okay? So that's a lot of work just for school. So then you also have on top of your school, you're gonna be doing all the clinical work that you're probably doing. If you're volunteering, you're volunteering. If you have some leadership things you're doing, you're gonna do your leadership stuff. If you're involved in clubs, you have your clubs. If you guys have a job, there you go. If you guys have research, et cetera, et cetera. So it adds on. And the more things you guys do as an undergrad, as a pre-med, the more stress you put on your grades. But the thing is, medical schools want to see that you can do a lot of good stuff, a lot of high quality extracurricular work and still keep up your grades. And there is a justified, justified reason for that. Now you may be thinking, oh, medical schools just want to put us through a lot of stuff and then like make us suffer so we can get in just to weed us out. Actually, that's not the case. They don't want to make you suffer. No one wants to make you suffer. The truth is that's what medicine is like. So let's talk about medical school to begin with, okay? When you guys get into medical school, and remember, all of you guys are gonna get into med school, so don't think you're not gonna get into med school, you're gonna get in. When you go to medical school, the amount of stuff you're learning literally increases like by tenfold, okay? You're probably learning 10 times the amount of material, if not even more, in your classes in one class than you did in undergrad okay so think about the amount of things you're learning in undergrad then multiply by 10 and that's what you're expected to learn in roughly the same amount of time so that's pretty crazy in my opinion okay so you have to be able to manage all that content number one number two there's a lot of extra stuff that goes into medical school that you know we really don't think about right away so for example a lot of students do research in medical school um, and that takes away from your studying. A lot of students go to clinics, maybe they're involved in the free clinic, stuff like that, so they that takes away from your studying. And in school, a lot of schools have something called clinical skills where they teach you how to evaluate a patient physically, right? So they teach you how to listen to the heart, look into someone's ears, less, like look into their nose, everything, uh, look into their mouth, ah, uh, so stuff like that, right? So that takes away from it. And then you also have something along the lines of a doctoring class that teaches people how to talk to patients effectively. How do you break the news to patients? How do you help them get through some difficult things? Okay, so those things are in addition to your studying. So in addition to your classwork, your anatomy labs and everything else, you have additional stuff you have to go into. And a lot of medical students also are involved in maybe organizations like AMSA on, or some other organizations at their medical school to begin with. So there's a lot of work that it you know medical school entails. As an undergrad, if you guys aren't able to handle all the stuff you have to do and still keep up your good grades, well, that might show medical schools that you may not be ready for medical school at that time. Okay, like don't think that just because your grades might be suffering right now, you're never gonna get into medical school. No, you're gonna get in. You guys have to believe in yourself, okay? 
just know that grades are really, really important. Now, what constitutes good grades for medical school? In my opinion, you guys should have above a 3.5 to be competitive for medical school. And when I say 3.5, I'm specifically talking about your BCPM. Now, your BCPM GPA are the subjects that medical schools look at, right? So you pretty much think about the prereqs I, I listed earlier. Your biology grades, so all the classes you took in biology, look into those. All the classes you took in your physics, all the, the chemistry classes, all the organic chemistry classes, um, all the uh, math classes, and all the English classes, including also statistics. All of those classes that you took okay go into your bcpm gpa and that's what medical schools use they don't really use your general gpa they don't use your operative gpa usually it's usually your bcpm okay so you want to make sure that the bio classes the chemistry classes the organic chemistry classes the physics classes the math classes and the english classes you are taking all in all of those classes you get good grades okay so above a 3.5 bcpm gpa that will get you into a very strong you know, position. Now, if you guys have additional things to go along with it, that'll help you. So create extracurricular activities, leadership experiences, all those things we've already talked about. But to be honest with you, having good grades is very, very vital to getting into medical school. And if anyone tells you otherwise, that's not the case. Now, don't be discouraged if you guys don't have the best grades, okay? There are still ways to get into medical school. There are still other programs you can do to make yourself more competitive. Because to be honest with you, life happens. And sometimes things are out of your control. And medical schools understand that. Medical schools understand the fact that no one's perfect and not all their applicants will be above 3.5 every single time. It's just not doable. It's just too strict, okay? Now, there are other ways to get into med school and we're gonna talk about them later on down the road. But today, we're gonna leave it at this. With that being said, I'm gonna end the video. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. Hope you hope this helped to begin with. Hope this really helped. And if it did, let me know below. If you guys like me more than Farhan, let me know, you know, I'll be back. Uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Take it easy, guys.